Hey guys, welcome back to Montevue. Today, I'm gonna to be going over how to add your NVR to our Montevue Go desktop software, which is available on Windows or Apple-based computers and is available for free to download on our Montevue.com website. All right, so the first step in all this is to go to Montevue.com to find the software download. Once you arrive on our main website, you're gonna look for the Help Center option towards the top of the webpage. And once we select Help Center, we're gonna look for the option called Software Downloads. Okay, once we look at the software downloads, we're gonna notice we've got options for either Apple or Windows-based programs. So choose which one applies to your computer. And then when it opens up that page, this blue lettering here will start that download. So for Windows-based PC, which is what I'm on, you'll notice that the download should start in the lower left corner. For Apple-based computers, you may see this error message when it comes up. What this means is that Apple does not want you to download any program that's not created by Apple or its partners. So in order to get around this, we're gonna have to go to your desktop. And first thing we wanna do is look for system preferences. We can either find this by looking for the logo, which looks like this down here, or if we head over to the Apple symbol in the upper left corner, there's an option for system preferences under that as well. Once we open up system preferences, we're gonna be looking for security and privacy, or it may just be called security on your iOS. Once we're in security, we wanna be on the general tab. And if you look down below, there is an option where it allows you to download apps from other locations. And if you did recently try to download Montevideo Go and it gave you the error message, then you will likely see down in this section here it will ask you if you want to download that specific file. If your Mac does not give you any options to download files that aren't approved by Mac, you may wanna take this up with Apple, contact your local Apple dealer or your tech services and see if they can help you out with this. Okay, so once the installer is all downloaded to your computer, go ahead and open that up and start the installation process for Montevideo Go. Much like any other program, it's gonna have you choose the location and what it's called. And then it's also gonna ask you to download two different programs here. So obviously we do wanna download the Montevideo Go desktop software, but as you'll notice, it does offer you a secondary option, which is the PC NVR download. What PC NVR does is it turns your computer into an NVR and it appropriates the hard drive in your computer to record the footage that is being recorded by your cameras. So keep in mind that your computer most likely does not have a surveillance grade hard drive built into it. So if you decide to use the PC NVR software and download your footage straight onto your computer, it does put a lot of stress on your hard drive and it may shorten the lifespan of your hard drive pretty significantly. So we definitely advise not downloading PC NVR and just avoiding this option. However, it is there if you guys want to do that. Okay, so once we get through the download, it is going to prompt us with a couple of questions. One, it's gonna have us uh, enter in a login and a password. The intention of this password and login is to keep people from opening up your computer program and getting into your cameras through the desktop software. This does not have to be the same as the NVR. Just keep in mind that it is a completely separate login and a password than your what's on your NVR. After we establish a login and a password, it's gonna ask you to set up a list of security questions. Now I'm just gonna answer zero for these, and honestly, I would recommend doing the same. Uh, if you guys ever forget the login for your program, it's almost easier to uninstall the program and just reinstall it than it would be to try to go through the password recovery process. Just my opinion, but if you guys wanna fill the security questions out, by all means, go ahead. So once we get past the security questions, it will open up the full program and it will take us to the devices page right away. This is where we can add our NVR and other cameras if you have independent cameras running. So once we land on the devices page, it's going to show us a couple of tutorials. You can just hit the exit button on these. They're not super useful and honestly, they're just in the way at this point. So we're looking in the upper left corner and we're gonna find the add button with the little plus sign. Once you click that, it's gonna pop up a little window here that says manual add. So the first line is what is our device name? This can be totally custom. The only restriction is that it cannot have a symbol in the name. 
Most people just call it NVR, but it can be your last name, the location where the NVR is located, whatever you want. This is just going to be how it appears on your computer. All right, so once we've chosen a device name, we're gonna to go to the second line, and this is the method to add. So initially it's gonna say IP domain, but it's really important that we change this to SN for device support P2P. So if we add our NVR using the IP address, we're only going to be able to communicate with it if the computer and the NVR are in the same network. However, if we add it using the serial number, this is gonna allow the computer to be able to communicate with the NVR regardless of what network it's on. As long as it has an internet connection, it's gonna be able to get the signal and you're gonna be able to view your cameras. So to reiterate, if you add it using the IP address, you're only gonna be able to see your NVR if you're locally connected to it. And if you add it using the serial number, you're gonna be able to see your NVR from wherever you are in the world. So once you change the method to add to serial number, then it's going to give you the option to add that serial number in the next line. So for this, we wanna make sure that we capitalize every letter of your serial number and any zeros you see are the number zero and not the letter O. So once we have our serial number correctly added in, the next line is we're gonna leave this in the default group. So the next two lines below default group are going to apply directly to your NVR. So your user is most likely going to be admin in all lowercase letters. So this would be A-D-M-I-N. And then your password is gonna be the exact same password you guys use to access your NVR. Okay, so once we got all of our credentials entered in, we're gonna hit the add button in blue down below. So this next part might take about a minute for the device to pop online, but we should see the status switch from offline in gray to online and green. If this does not switch over and it continues to say offline, you may see a parentheses with INV start just after offline. This means that an invalid username or password has been used and it's likely there was just a typo in the password. So here you have two options. You can either delete your NVR completely and start over, or you can go to this little pencil icon and edit the password if you think that you might have typed in the password wrong. So once that thing kicks online, uh, we can pretty much bail out of the devices screen. And to do that, you wanna go up top and press the big plus button. Think of this like starting a new tab on a web browser. It is going to take you to the main menu every time you press that plus button, and then you can choose a new category to go into. So just to make sure that we've got our cameras looking good, we're gonna go into the live view. And my recommendation is to right click on your NVR and choose substream. So the substream is designed to be sent over the internet in a timely manner. It is a slightly reduced version of a resolution for your cameras, but the idea here is so you get smooth video when you're on the internet. However, if your NVR has a really fast connection and your computer has a strong connection where it's at, then you can switch this to mainstream for your full resolution video. And as long as you can see the time in the upper right corner tick normally, then you probably don't have any lag issues. However, if you guys are watching the mainstream and you're noticing lag or continuity errors, switch the feed to substream and that will most likely correct any kind of uh, glitchy issues with the video feed. All right, so now that we can see our video playing smooth on the live view and everything is online and green, then you guys are good and we have successfully added your NVR to Montevideo Go desktop. If you guys have any questions beyond this or if you guys got stuck in any portion of this, give our tech support a call. Those guys can help you out with anything that you would need and we are gonna be here Monday through Friday for you guys. Well, thanks for joining Mon of you guys and I hope you've been enjoying the most recent videos we've been releasing. Stay tuned for more how-to videos coming up in the next few weeks. Thanks guys, have a good day.